Good morning. Merry Christmas. We are on day three out of so it's good to be back uh, together this morning as we continue to celebrate this Christmas season. Um, of course, this morning, uh, as is our custom here at Good Shepherd, uh, we will be enjoying uh, the Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols, which is really the retelling of the story of salvation from Genesis through the Gospel of Luke and uh, ultimately the Gospel of John, um, which has sort of been our theme this year, the Word Made Flesh that has come to dwell among us. So that's the story that we're going to hear uh, through both word and song. Um, one of the differences, of course, as has been the case since we've been able to regather, is that we are not able to sing congregationally. So we will stand for the opening hymn, but the hymns that uh, take place in between the readings will just stay seated since we're essentially listening and receiving those um, as, as anthems uh, this morning. Uh, we will have Holy Communion uh, after the lessons and carols, and uh, so this will be a wonderful time of celebration. Um, those of you joining us by live stream, we're glad to have you with us this morning, and we would ask that you let us know that you're here by uh, using the chat feature, uh, the, the blue circle. You can send us a message, and um, we wish you well this morning uh, uh, for being with us. So uh, let us observe just a few moments of quiet reflection, and then when you hear the organ begin, uh, please stand. Dear people of God, in this Christmas season, let it be our duty and delight to hear once again the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until the glorious redemption brought to us by his holy child, Jesus, and let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. But first, 
Let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died, and especially for his church in our country and in this city. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as all those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and that whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. shall bruise the serpent's head. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden." God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And said to him, and the man and the wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God 
among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his head. that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. 
So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its thorns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven, as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward 
and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all of my holy mountains, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
The angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was ascended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, 
the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The shepherds go to the manger, a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger, When they saw this, they made known 
what had been told to them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what these shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Wise men are led by the star to Jesus. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. But so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search, search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they had offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Oh. 
St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation, a reading from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son, our Lord. He, he was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and born of, of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Merry Christmas once again. It is good to be back uh, here for this wonderful um, festival of lessons and carols. And I just want to say thank you to our vocalist and, and uh, for Tim. Thank you so much for, for blessing us this morning. Thank you. Um, just to hear the word and then have time to meditate and listen, it just brings it all together in terms of the story and great promise that we have um, this season. Amen. Amen. All right, there's a couple things that are different as we move into the rest of the Christmas season um, and kind of into the new year. Um, we're not going to have the Zoom courtyard connection, the sort of fellowship time uh, after the service. So if you're watching us by live stream, we won't be gathering for that this Sunday or next Sunday. And we've moved up Holy Communion from the Reserve Sacrament uh, to noon. There's been a couple different times out there. We're going to try it at noon. So if you're watching uh, by, by live stream, uh, I will be in the chapel here at noon today till about 12.30, um, offering communion from the Reserve Sacrament, um, if you'd like to come by at the church. Um, as is our custom here, uh, starting tomorrow through New Year's, we won't have regular uh, office hours uh, to give our staff a bit of a break uh, and some time uh, to, to be maybe by themselves might be the, the best thing. Um, but we will be checking email, and we will be checking the mail, and so we will be sort of functioning. So if there are things that come up, and also a reminder, um, several, several of you have asked that um, any end-of-year gifts or pledges that need to be uh, turned in need to be turned in by the 31st in order to count for 2020. So that's why we checked the mail, right, this week. Um, but just to remind you of that, and of course, um, we continue to have the alms basins in the back of the church every Sunday since we can't pass those um, as part of our worship. So those are just a few reminders. Finally, at the end of our service, um, we the, the altar looks beautiful, don't you agree, for Christmas? So thank you to Joe Wood for all that she does for that. We did cut back on flowers, um, so we have fewer flowers. We weren't able to do the normal delivery that we normally do because of, of COVID restrictions. Um, so we're inviting you after the service, if you'd like to take one of the uh, poinsettias home with you, uh, please come forward. Jeannie Couillard will be here to help facilitate that. We're just going to save a few for uh, next Sunday, since it is the second Sunday of Christmas. But um, if you'd like to take one home, you're welcome to come forward and, and do that. Or if you have a neighbor or a friend that might be blessed by a Christmas flower, you're welcome to take one as well after the service. Okay? So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ your only Son to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them this day in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Would you please stand? For some reason, it just occurred to me that this is the last Sunday of 2020. Hopefully that's a good thing, right? <laughs> um, and I just want to take a moment, I know there's not a huge crowd here today, but um, you know, we have an incredible group of people here um, that work behind the scenes throughout the week um, and every day almost. And of course, that is our staff. And so, especially you on the live stream, every week, uh, America Seely, in addition to all of her other duties, is posting services and getting everything out there online for people to access and enjoy. So America, would you stand up? Um, Eric Parasoletti is faithfully there each week, live streaming and getting our sound organized. Joe Wood is in the narthex. Joe, would you step inside here for a minute? Um, Joe Wood is here, I mean, I think next to God, you're here more than anybody else, I think. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, setting things up and, and getting everything ready, Tim and Debbie, uh, David uh, is not in the house right now. Um, but just, I just want to say thank you to these amazing people who have made this year. Um, it's been a hard year, as you can imagine, for everybody, no matter what circumstances you're in. Uh, but churches, uh, you know, have had a hard time, uh, you know, getting through some very difficult uh, months. And so uh, I'm just so grateful to you all, to our volunteers, but to these amazing people who um, have partnered with all of us to make this year, um, I think, even more than tolerable. I think we've been able to stay connected and do things that really exceeded um, anything that I could have uh, imagined. So I just want to, on this last Sunday of the year, looking forward to hopefully a much more hopeful and bright year ahead, uh, I just wanted to offer those, those sentiments uh, this morning. So let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
forget the other two staff members not here today are Letty Anderson and Beth Long, who pennies and all of our financial stuff, amazing work during 2020. So if you're, either of you are watching, uh, thank you uh, for your work this year as well. You ready to be done with 2020? <laughs> yeah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.